So let's get started talking about Bollinger Bands, one of the most recognized and accepted trading indicators used in the Forex CFD cryptocurrency markets. Now tonight, I'm gonna to use the term security, and sometimes I'll even mix it up and say shares or Forex, but basically I'm talking about any tradable financial instrument that includes stocks, bonds, commodities, futures, indices, mutual funds, options, cryptocurrency. It just gets very boring saying security, 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 or asset, asset, asset. So we'll mix up the terms a little bit, but when we're talking about it, we're talking about any financial instrument that's traded on the open markets. Similarly, I also will mix up or intermix the terms investing and trading. Now we all know investing is a much longer term process. While trading is what we're all here for, because that's a shorter term and most of us are trading CFDs and this is online trading. But I use the word investing or trading, but I'm talking about either one because Bollinger Bands works great for either. Now also, Bollinger Bands fits into a category known as technical indicators in the field of technical analysis. Now tonight, we're not gonna be discussing in any detail technical analysis. We're gonna be looking only at Bollinger Bands. But if you're here asking this question, should I buy today? What prices will be tomorrow, next week, or next year? Wouldn't investing be easy if we knew the answers to these seemingly simple questions? But if you're attending this class in the hopes that technical analysis and Bollinger Bands has the answer to these questions, I'm sorry. I'm got to disappoint you it doesn't however if you're attending this class with the hope that technical analysis using bollinger bands will improve your investing i have good news for you it will now bollinger bands were created by legendary money manager john bollinger and one of the best advantages to bollinger bands is that john bollinger is still active in the financial markets now bollinger bands were developed over 30 years ago and his initial, his initial indicator was developed primarily for the stock market and some futures market because there was no online trading then. But over the years, it's been adjusted and tested in these markets and it works well in any security that we're looking at at any time frame. Now, because Bollinger is still active in the marketplace, we have a wonderful site we can all go to at www.bollingerbands.com and we can learn all about Bollinger Bands directly from the horse's mouth. And it's very rare that you can get stuff directly from a developer. Most of the time you're reading about, you can read a book by the person who like, when you look at um, Wilder or uh, Appel's development, you can read their initial books and their initial thesis, but there's nobody around telling you exactly what was in their minds. And so what you get are gurus or market wonders or miracle makers who are telling you how to apply these asset, these indicators using their own interpretation. Now, there's been an abundance of information published on how to trade with Bollinger Bands. Much of it, though, is pretty discretionary in theory. The how to use Bollinger Bands information usually pushes it back to the trader to interpret what the securities price is doing relevant to its bands. Now, Bollinger Bands uses a very complex calculation, which you'll never have to do, but you have to get learn it one time to develop what's called the upper band and the lower band. And these are used using a scientific mathematical formula called standard deviation. But these bands form a trading band or an envelope around price. It starts out with a moving average and then calculates two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below to give us this band. And tonight we're gonna to talk about these standard deviation calculations, but again, once we finish with tonight, you'll never ever have to deal with them again. These Bollinger Bands they are just dropped on the charts for you and you'll never have to calculate them or draw them. 
but you need to understand where these lines you're looking at come from so you can see exceptions to the rule. Now, again, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all financial markets, including equities, forex, commodities, and futures. Bollinger Bands can be used in most time frames from very short term period to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. And Bollinger Bands technically are answers one very important question. Are prices high or low on a relative basis? So by definition, when price is near that upper band that I showed you, prices are high. And when price is at the lower band, prices are low for that particular asset. Now that bit of information is incredibly valuable. And it's even more powerful if combined with other tools such as indicators for confirmation. Now, I know we're, we're, we're talking about a lot of generalities here. and We're talking about things that you, know, you may not be grasping, but I put together a handout for you that also explains this, shows it to you, and lets you read it on your own. Now, it's right there on your screen where you see the what's and how's and Bollinger Bands, at, but you have to click on the download button to download it to whatever device you're attending class with tonight because you can only get it during class. In the recorded version, it's not accessible and there's nowhere else to get it. So please click on that download button, download it to whatever device you're using, and then you can transfer it around to whatever you need it from afterwards. It's a simple PDF file and it will help you. It follows along tonight's class and has some more definitive explanations and charts to help you. Now, Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they're a type of trading band or envelope. They provide relative definitions of high and low that can be used to create rigorous trading approaches. Now, as I said, Bollinger Bands are based on a central moving average line and standard deviation. Now, interestingly, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. The calculations are involved are somewhat complex, and the risk of making a mistake is high. Also, calculating by hand is very slow. And that's why statisticians rely on spreadsheets and computers to crunch their numbers. And standard deviation is a standard mathematical formula. So if you need to calculate, you would just tell the computer to calculate two standard deviations. The standard deviation is a measure, and this is where we're going to get a little bit complex, but I'll never say it again. You'll never have to worry about it again. Standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. Mean is from its average. So we take the moving average line, and we actually calculate the dispersion of that set of data. It's calculated as a square root of variance by determining the variation between each data point relative to the mean. If the data points are further from the mean, there's a higher deviation within the data set. So standard deviation is calculated on the mean. The distance of each data point from the mean is squared, summed, and averaged to find the variance. Or to put it another way, variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points, subtracting the mean of each data point individually, squaring each of the results, and then taking another mean of these squares. Standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Okay. Did you understand that? Well, I've said it about a thousand times, and I do have an undergraduate degree in math. So yeah, I kind of understand it, but you're not expected to. Just remember, standard deviation is the square root of the variance from the average, the moving average, but you don't have to calculate it. So from that, we end up with three lines on our charts. The baseline, which is the middle band, is a 20 base. It's a 20 period moving average. And then we calculate the upper band, 
by simply spreading it two standard deviations above the upper band. And the lower band is the exact opposite. We take two minus two standard deviations below. That's it. And we have three bands on our chart. So let me pop up a live chart here. And what we're looking at when it pops up on your screen is we're looking at gold. And I'm going to shut this one down. And we're looking at the live gold chart with standard deviation with Bollinger Bands on there. And this red line is a 20 period moving average of the price. From that, we've calculated two standard deviations up and two standard deviations down. These lines are drawn on the chart, and this gives us our upper band and our lower band. Technically, what I've colored it in with light green is only a visualization tool. It's got nothing to do with anything. And if you ever go to set up Bollinger Bands, you'll see that we have the basis band, which is the moving average, the upper band and the lower band. Our inputs are 20 period moving average based on the close and two standard deviations. Now, of course, we could adjust this to one or to three or to two and a half. And I personally use two and a half, but I've used it for many, many years. And I understand what changes happen, but it's no longer really Bollinger, John Bollinger Band. It's my version of Bollinger Bands. So remember, so this is, gives you our Bollinger Band. So we can see over here on the right also our charts help us along. This is our basis. This is our upper band and our lower band. Not very complex. No, you just gone up to the indicators, dropped it on your chart. You never have to calculate it again. All done. Now the width of the band is a secondary part of Bollinger Bands. The narrower the band, the more contrite the market, the less activity, the less volatility. The wider the band, the more volatile the market is. So one of the main strategies of Bollinger Bands, one of the most well-known strategies is the Bollinger Band breakout. When you see prices stuck in a tight band, that's telling you the markets are very have very low volatility. They're not moving too much. And when price breaks up or down, you could actually trade that price move. That's some strategy somebody came up with. That's a known strategy in the market for using Bollinger Bands. But that's getting us off the point. Now, it said everything you need to know about price action is contained within these bands. You can find where to put your stop loss, where to put your take profit point, whether the market is moving up or down, and whether that trend is about to reverse. So let's go learn how we would use these Bollinger Bands to make sense of the market. So hold on one second. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. And let's translate all that into application. Now, there are three primary ways we can use Bollinger Bands. It's for pattern recognition. It's for reversal signals and for trend analysis. Now, similar to double tops, head and shoulders, double bottoms, flags, pennants, okay, Bollinger Bands exhibits two very well-known and acceptable patterns. And this is called the M and the W. Bollinger Bands also gives us early warning signals of reversals, and it also detects trend continuation or the end of a trend. So the first one we're going to look at, and they're all in that handout I gave you, and defined much better in the handout than 
you know, where we're going to go because we have such limited time in class. Okay. But now we're going to look at the first pattern or the two patterns because they're, they're just reverses of each other. We have the M and the W pattern. Okay. Now, the nice thing about Bollinger Bands is it takes these patterns quite a while to actually develop. So you don't have to, you don't even recognize them or can't even tell that they're here till they form, if it's the M or the W, till it's formed the second bottom. So you have all of this time for it to happen. So what we look for is we look for an N or an upside down N. Okay. In the case of the W, we look for an upside down N. The first leg, the second leg, and the third leg. At this leg, when that leg here bounces off the same bottom as before, we're now should be aware that we're forming the W pattern and being able to, to start moving into action. When that is like a head and shoulders, you're not even sure you have a head and shoulders until the, the, the last shoulder is formed. So we're not sure of anything until we get the second bottom and start to move up. And once it breaks the moving average line, then we know we're into a strong W pattern and we would then make a long trade. We also have the opposite route, which is the M, which forms with double tops. And again, now it's forming the N formation. When it forms the second top, and then starts moving back down is when we'd be called to action. At the crossover, the moving average is when we would enter a trade and we would project the profit target to be equal with where the original M formation started. So we have the W and the M. Now, we recommend at all times to use other indicators for confirmation. And it happens to be that Bollinger Bands works extremely well with RSI, Relative Strength Index. And when we start looking at Bollinger Bands, okay, there are two types of outside the patterns. Now, there's two types of tops that we should be looking at to look and verify the trends. The first is after a trend move, price fails to reach the outer band as the uptrend becomes weaker. And during consolidation, price spikes into the outer band, which gets rejected immediately, which means that when price is moving upward, we want to look at it in relationship to the band. And I'll take you over to a more defined or easier to see chart, a larger chart. Okay. Let me just get my markings off of here. So what we want to look at is as price is moving up, see how it's riding the band here. Then here we get a, it stays on the band. We get a rejection. We get a, a an opposite candle, but it can't make it top. We get another push towards the upper band. It still can't make it. And then finally it fails. Okay. That's one of the tops. The other is almost a double top and it keeps trying to reach that top. Now we have to look at these in relationship to the candles around it. And we would like to see a bullish or a bearish engulfing candle in the formation. And look in the handout that I gave you because I have it more examples there for you. But we're not going to stop there. So don't think you have to master it now. So we're going to talk about a little bit more, more precisely. So while Bollinger Bands are exceptionally helpful in determining when an asset has overshot to the upside or downside, it's important to use the band to also set risk conditions, not just entry points. Now, when you're setting your risk or calculating your risk reward ratios, you have to take in the, the width of the band. There's no calculation, but when the bands are very wide, that's telling you the market's very vol volatile. So therefore you have to set a higher risk reward ratio as when the market, the bands are narrow and the markets are less 
you know, have less swing to them. Now, in contrast to other indicators, the Bollinger Bands are a non-static indicator and they change their shape based on recent price action, accurately measure momentum and volatility. Thus, we can use Bollinger Bands to analyze the strength of trends and get a lot of in more information this way. So, as I was saying, there are two tops, okay? And that is also serves as a two bottoms because everything that's for up also is identical for down. During strong trends, price stays close to the outer band. If price pulls away from the outer band as price to trend continues, it shows fading momentum. In other words, if the trend continues upward in price movement, but the band start the price starts moving away from the band, it's showing you that that asset has lost its momentum. Now, when re, the band repeatedly pushes to the outer band, but don't actually reach the outer band, shows a total lack of power. The break of the moving average is often the signal that the trend is ending. So in this screenshot here that we're looking at for the US Canadian dollar, we can tell a whole story of how price had moved through the bands. Now, granted, you can only trade at the wall here, because you can only trade prices this way. But you have to learn how to interpret what the prices mean and what the candles mean. And the only way you can do that is by looking at historically what, what the bands are telling you. So we can start telling a whole story right here and learning how to use the bands. We see price start to move on an uptrend and it does what we call ride the band. Okay. At this point, it starts losing its momentum. Okay. The band continues upward, price moves sideways and down lower, and the price is unable to stay near that upper band. But it still hasn't broken the moving average, so we're not even sure if it's going to reversal, if it's re losing its momentum or reversing. Finally, it breaks that moving average. And now we know that this uptrend is over and we can see it riding the band and making a full charge downtrend. Now, if you notice, okay, we moved over here, not towards, not near the moving average, but then we saw the price try to push towards the outer band here. And then we got a bearish, a bullish engulfing candle next. Okay, and it's still unable to make that, it's completely rejected by that outer band. And price starts to bounce up, but again, we need it to move above the moving average. Here again, we see it start riding the band it stays right on that outer band and it falls off, doesn't break the moving average, it tries again to reach the outer band, doesn't bounce us off, breaks the moving average here, but doesn't move to downtrend. We also didn't have any engulfing candles, bounces back up and is rejected entirely, now breaks the band, the moving average again and moves into a hardcore downtrend. And then starts to repeat its similar patterns again. So at this point, again, because we can only trade moving forward here, we see price move down, move sideways. We got this very good bullish engulfing candle, a break above the moving average. And at this point, we would use other confirmation tools, but we would be looking at moving into a long trade at this point forward. So as we said, number one, Price is in a strong downtrend, and price stays close to the outer band all the time, which is a very bearish signal. That was in number one, riding the band down here. Then in two, price fails to reach the outer band, and then shoots up very strongly, even showing an engulfing pattern. This is a classical reversal pattern where the bearish trend strength has faded. So we can see that right here, and then moving up in number two, in three, we see three swing highs with lower highs. The swing highs reach the outer band, whereas the following two failed, showing fading strength. And then four, a strong downtrend where price stayed close to the outer band. It tried to pull away, but the bears were always in control during four. 
So three, we see the two time rejection, the hardcore downtrend moving into four. And then five, we saw price consolidate sideways, not reaching the outer bands anymore. And the rejection pin bar ended that downtrend, which is here in five. We moved to sideways consolidation, and then we're getting ready to look at future prices. So as the online trading markets grew and the use of Bollinger Bands and the move away from the stock market, which in those days had very little volatility, it became very important to understand the volatility of the markets. And this was done with the creation of the percent B. Okay, the percent B is a calculation that uses bandwidth to depict how the, the volatility of the markets. Now, appropriate, this indicator is called the Bollinger bandwidth or just a bandwidth indicator. It is simply the value of the upper band less the value of the lower band. Understandably, assets with higher prices tend to have higher bandwidth readings. So, but remember, let's not freak out. You don't have to calculate anything. Now, let's go back to a live chart. Okay. So we put the Bollinger Bands on here just by going indicator, looking for Bollinger Bands, and putting them down below. Now, Bollinger Bands percent B is a separate indicator. So we would come down to the chart, and we would look for Bollinger Bands percent B. I've already got it set up here. And there we go. And that is simply the line down below. And it varies over a zero line and moves above and below the, that zero and the one number. And it's simply calculating the width or the volatility of the markets. It is a separate indicator. I don't use the Bollinger Band percent B for anything. It's, if you like it, if it's an indicator you want to learn, it's an offshoot of Bollinger and Bollinger Bands and can help you calculate the volatility of the market by subtracting the upper band from the lower band. A lot of people swear by it. I just don't use it. You know, not all of us can use everything. Mm -hmm. So remember, successful day trading is mostly a game of pennies. The best firms and individual traders who day trade are looking to scalp small amounts. Using Bollinger Bands and the percent B show that interday edges do exist. And you can use inter Bollinger Bands to find these trading assets. Now, Bollinger Bands and the Bollinger Bands percent B have very large qualified edges when you apply them in a systematic manner. There is a preciseness here using Bollinger Bands in this way. Use the preciseness to your advantage. And the trading strategy I was mentioning to you earlier is called the Bollinger Band Squeeze. And it's about when prices are squeezed into a narrow band that they must be broken out of. So the Bollinger Band Squeeze is a straightforward strategy that is relatively simple to implement. First, look for security with narrowing Bollinger Bands and low bandwidth levels. Ideally, bandwidth should be nearly the low end of its range. Second, wait for a band break to signal the start of a new move. An upside band break is bullish, while a downside band break is bearish. Now remember, when you have this, there is no directional clues and there's no clue that's gonna tell you how far it's gonna go. But similar to like triangles ascending and descending, when price is in there and breaks out, if it breaks upward, there's a certain amount of momentum it's going to carry upward or downward. Okay. So now note that the narrowing bands do not provide any directional clues. They simply infer that the volatility is contracting. Once you have it contracted in, charters should be prepared for a volatility expansion, which means a directional move. So even though the Bollinger Band squeeze is straightforward, 
charters should be at least combining the strategy with basic chart analysis to confirm signals, especially volume. For example, a break above resistance can be used to confirm a break above the upper band. Similarly, a break below support can be used to confirm a break below the lower band. Unconfirmed band breaks are subject to failure. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the use of a different strategy. And hold on, let me pop up this little presentation I have for you. This is done by a friend.
So as you can see, Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that can provide you with lots of information about trend, buy and sell balances, about potential trend shifts, help you set your stop loss and take and um, take profit points, and uh, help you analyze risk and reward ratios, as well as seeing market volatility. So together with the moving average and the RSI, Bollinger Bands makes a great foundation for a trading strategy. And using Bollinger Bands with candlesticks is one of the best ways you can use them as a package. So hopefully I've given you all the information you needed in the handout and you'll have the time to read it and learn from it. And thank you very much for enjoying our video tonight and our class tonight. And thank you very much for supporting Trade Time as well as investing.com. And as I said, if you want to go set up a demo account at Trade Time, go to www.tradetime.com. And it only takes a few lines. There's, like I said, there's no credit card needed and no deposit required. And you can start using their charts and watch the videos on Bollinger Bands and learn more about Bollinger Bands. And Trade Times will also set you up with a one-on-one -on -one training class with a financial analyst to help you learn these better. So thank you very much. And remember, you'll be able to see a recorded version of this class after it's been edited on investing.com, or you can use the link you used to come to tonight's class to see a recorded version of this class in about 24 hours. So thank you once again, and have a great trading week. Good night now.